All right then, hello, good evening, welcome, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you happen to be. I'm called Paul, I'm also called Knickknack, I do the daily brain teaser, they will be floating around somewhere in this corner here in this video, you can look those up if you'd like an entertaining pub quiz. I also tend to talk about films that I've seen, although I've not seen as many as I'd like just recently. There seems to be too many films that are too damn long just recently. I also, on the other hand, I also watch TV shows, and I have to confess, I've been doing that quite a lot just recently, what with being out of a job and having to deal with lockdown. Just recently, I've been watching, or started watching, Star Trek Discovery's third season, which is looking interesting. I've also been watching the one and only series of Watchmen, uh, the Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons-derived TV series, set in an updated Watchmen world of 2019. It's good stuff, and tonight I've caught the very last episode. Let's see what I can tell you about it. Shall we? Um, episode 9, See How They Fly, opens with a brief summary of Episode 8, reminding us that Dr. Man Manhattan, uh, Yaya Abdul Mateen, and if you're out there, Mr. Mateen, I do apologise if I've got your first name wrong there. I make a hash of all sorts of things. Dr. Manhattan has been kidnapped by the 7th Cavalry. The sh scene then shifts, excuse me, The scene then shifts to 1985 to show us Adrian Veidt, Ozzy Mandeus, played by Jeremy Irons, recording a, me a message for President Robert Redford, while a cleaner sneaks into Ozzy Mandeus' office. The, she the scene shifts again to 2008 to show us Lady True, Hong, Ta Hong Chow, arriving at Karnak, Adrian's Antarctic base, with some news, the knowledge of what he did in 1985, and an offer for the man that she says is her father. She wants to get rid of every single nuclear weapon available on the whole of planet Earth. She's going to need him and Dr. Manhattan to do it. We flash forward to now, 2019, strictly speaking. And while True's plan is being kick-started, we see the Doctor's kidnapping from the viewpoint of the cavalry. Their leader, Senator King, James Walt, has had the same idea. Captain Manhattan, steal his powers, take over the world. Only with a slightly more hard right option. Senator King wants white America to be the only America. Angela, of course, is stranded at this point, having arrived at the base, wanting desperately to help her husband, but unable to do so. She can only look on while her husband is dissolved. She can only look on and hope for a new ex, ex machina. Now, I'm going to get confused, possibly incoherent, possibly all over the place, but it is getting, for me, comparatively late at night. Um, what did I think? Episode and series. What did I make of them? It has to be said. This is an incredibly good, strong concluding episode. There's a couple of things I didn't take to, uh, a couple of minor points possibly, but on the whole, it's a well-written piece. It's beautifully acted. It's fantastic looking. The world building and set design for this series is great. It really is quite something. Um, soundtrack, uh, written by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross of Nine Inch Nails, who, I'll be honest, I've never managed to get quite into... Nine Inch Nails, whatsoever at all. They've not been a big feature in my life. But this soundtrack that they've that the pair have come up with for this particular series is definitely an interesting listen. I might have to look it up, see if it's available on iTunes or on Spotify. Um, the episode's sort of double barrel ending. We see... We see Lady True defeating. That's the initial ending. We also see a deeply ambiguous ending with uh, Angela Avar, Regina King. Beep. 
that is potentially explosive, possibly ambiguous. We don't see it completed. Um, it's a bit like the ending of the first series of the original Penny Dreadful. It's like that. It's incompleted. It sort of cuts off partly through the ending. So if there was ever a season two, that's when we would expect it to see it. Fit. Sorry, I've just got my computer doing something in the background and there's all sorts of new entertaining sound effects. At any rate, even if this ending is not followed through, even if it's not followed by a series two, it's a perfectly good ending. It, it leaves it hanging nicely. The acting is great. It's all around fantastic. This is a very good ensemble cast. I'm very aware Regina King got a primetime Emmy for Watchmen and a very well-deserved one at that. But she's the front of a superb all-round ensemble cast, and I think I've said. Uh, Louis Gossett Jr. is the ambiguous, as this series take on Hood is Justice. Um, Tim Blake Nelson is looking last. Jeremy Irons as, as Adrian Veidt is absolutely fantastic. The, the perfect, perfectly pitched stage villain. He really is slightly cartoony. Hey, it's a graphic novel, live with it. But he's still on point. You do not hire Jeremy Isaacs to play a villain and not expect a good performance. And that's what we've got there. About the only thing I can tell you is that See How They Fly is a good finish to a fantastic little series. Yes, I've got issues. Um, Veidt getting arrested for his actions in the original comic seemed to me to spoil the ending. He was, if I've understood more and given the, uh, more on Alan Moore's original intentions, he was, if I've understood it, supposed to get away with murdering three million people. True not getting Manhattan's powers. That's another one. That seems on a similar scale. Not quite the same as as Veidt's original actions in the comic, but it, it seems she should have got away with it. Those are minor complaints, though. See how they fly as a piece. Watch one as a series. Formidably watchable stuff. <laughs> Just as a final thought, could there or should there be a second series of Watchmen? I don't know. From where I'm sitting, and a second series could be a little ambiguous. It could be good, but they would have producers would have to work in it. And David Linderhoff, uh, David Lindelof, I should get the name right. Um, said he won't be doing another series. He isn't planning to, which is a shame. He's done well leading the cast and crew on this one. On the other hand, as things stand, series one of Watchmen is fantastically good. It's a deep, complicated, rich story in a deep, complicated, rich world, and I seriously suggest you go and see it. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Don't fall off the bus.